Hello and welcome to FeatherCast. My name is Rich Bowen, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Zonka Libau, who represents the Kafka Project. Thank you so much for making time for this. I'm going to start with assuming that uh, our listeners don't know what this project is. And I was uh, reading the, the website, and I've got two different definitions of it. In one place, it says it's a distributed streaming platform. And in another, it says that it is a distributed publish subscribe messaging system. I was wondering if you could tell me what the project does and what these definitions mean. Yes, of course. First of all, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I was actually looking at the very same place that you were probably looking at when I prepared for this. And I found the same two definitions. So um, Kafka has been around for quite a while now. I think it got open source back in 2009, if I'm not mistaken. OK. And, and it, it graduated as a top level project in, uh, looks like, 2012. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, it has evolved quite a bit over time. So originally, Kafka was a, as you just said, a published subscribe messaging system, which basically means you stick a message in on one end and you get it out on the other end. Plus a little bit of extra work done around parallelism, fault tolerance, and Kafka takes care of a lot of yeah, high, high throughput and availability things for you. Over time, Kafka actually evolved from a single project to more of an entire streaming platform. So with the addition of Kafka Connect and Kafka Streams, that they gave you the ability to actually ingest data into Kafka from a variety of sources. So there's connectors for JDBC databases, other publish subscribe mechanisms, or even HTTP where you can just call a web service and ingest data into Kafka in regular intervals. And then with Kafka Streams, you get actual message processing based on those Kafka topics, which allows you to join two topics to each other. So for example, you have, if you have a click stream from your web page, which only gives you a customer number, you could join that with your customer's name and address from your master data management system, which gives you much more possibilities of working with your data and getting insight from your streaming data as opposed to older batch oriented systems. Can you give us an example of how this is used in, in production? Absolutely. So my first use case was a very simple one, was basically log collection. So we had lots mm -hmm. of servers that were situated throughout the entire company. And all of those servers forwarded their log files to a simple Kafka cluster from where we wrote it out to an elastic search cluster for indexing and searching. But Kafka is a very versatile system. You'll find it pretty much anywhere these days. So whenever you perform a transaction in your online banking system, there's a okay. high likelihood that that will go through Kafka at some point in time. What Kafka does is it gives you the ability to read streams in parallel. So on the one hand, you can have your systems that actually perform your transaction. But you could also read the stream with stuff like uh, fraud detection systems or an uh, analyzing your customer base and building clusters out of that for targeted marketing campaigns and things like that. There's also lots of IoT use cases that make use of Kafka because it gives you the ability to gather data decent in a decentralized fashion where you have, uh, for example, for connected car use cases, you could have an Asia cluster, you could have a Europe cluster, and you could have a cluster in North America so that you can stream data to your, your continent and then gather that in the central location for processing later on. Looking back to the, to the origins of the project, um, I, I read Kafka in, in high school and in college. I was wondering, where did the name of this project originate? What's, what's the significance? Pretty much exactly what you just said. Okay. So Jay Krebs, the, the guy who, found, or who started, initially started the project at LinkedIn, he liked reading Kafka, and Kafka was the writer. And Apache Kafka is a system optimized for writing. So that's the sort of mental connections that he made when he chose the name for the project. I believe you have an upcoming 3.0 release soon. I was wondering if you could tell me uh, what's in that release. What have you been working on? 
So for the upcoming Apache Kafka 3.0 release, the main thing that the community is currently working on is to remove the reliance on Zookeeper as an underlying consensus system that Kafka is using. Uh, there's work being done to replace that with an integrated consensus mechanism, which requires a few breaking changes. So those are the main reason why the next release will be a major release in Kafka. The idea is to have a so-called bridge release, which makes the people an optional dependency. So you can use it if you want to, but you can also use the newly developed consensus mechanism that's being built into Kafka. But it'll only be mandatory to use this new mechanism once Kafka 4.0 rolls around, which will probably be sometime next year. I noticed also on your website that you have uh, Kafka Summit scheduled for, for August. What kind of an event is that typically? Typically, there's at least two Kafka Summits every year, one in Northern America and one in Europe. This year being an exception for well, obvious reasons. So the Kafka Summit in Europe was canceled this spring, and the Kafka Summit in Austin this August will be a virtual event, if I'm not mistaken. So the Kafka Summit is usually a very large event. I think there was uh, more than a thousand guests at the, la the last summit in San Francisco. There's um, users of Kafka, there's developers, the, there's loads and loads of fun and interesting people to talk to. So it's usually a really good event to be at and to just connect to people, be part of the community and uh, yeah, see what other people are doing with Kafka. There's lots and lots of interesting use cases out there and most people actually like to talk about them. If someone wants to get involved in the community, where do we come to talk to you? First place to stop by would obviously be, obviously be the mailing list. So there's the users mailing list and the development mailing list. Both of, both of those are very active and there's lots of nice people to talk to. Kafka Summit, as we just discussed, would also be a very good option to come by and see what, it, what it's all about and meet some people. And the offline community is also fairly strong. There's probably active meetups in every major city that you can find. So those are really good uh, chances to connect to people as well. And I will uh, link to all of those resources in the description of this video down below. Thank you very much for making time to speak with me. And we look forward to seeing you around the community. Uh, for those of you that, that wish to, to learn more about the project, you can read at kafka.apache.org. And uh, as I said, I'll link to the details about the uh, Kafka Summit down below. So do try and check that out as well. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you.